you weren't even part of DBL Center when I first met you. Yeah. I, I, met, I first met right? Mike. Yeah. I first met Mike at his first stand-up routine. Yeah. No I think way. it was McGuire's comedy. Governors. Shop. Governors. Yeah. And I was sitting at the table with Dave and Molly, his grandmother, yeah. who's still alive. Yep. And Denise and That's Eugene so and Lisa. Cool. And it was like I was invited to the family table at his <laughs> at his uh, stand-up yeah. routine. And I'm like, wow. And, and My father wasn't there because he was in Hawaii running his TDI book at the time. And, and well, Molly and then Molly calls up Dave the next day, and yeah. she said, "I sat next to a really nice Greek boy at, at Mike's routine. You need to do business with him." <laughs> nice. Right to my dad. Yeah. Right. Really? So, so yeah. Dave calls me up. He says, yeah. "Come on down. Let's figure something out." Yeah. Right? yeah. That's awesome. And to this day, I still speak to Molly, who's going to be 90 in, in January. Shout out to Molly. She's like, "I told her we're doing this event," and I said, "I'm bringing Simon." She goes, "The Greek boy? What are you, boy, man? Whatever you want to call her, grandma." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you met the DBL Center and, you know, my agency? And yeah, this, I mean, this goes back, geez, man. Uh, so I started with Reliance at, in 2011. I think we started working in 2013, if I'm not mistaken. And our, go ahead, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, so I, I literally, with was my manager, we were dropping off a, I think we were dropping off a bonus check, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. And then the account, you had gone on with my father. Yes, yes, Long Beach Medical. That was another one. Which yeah. isn't even around anymore. Right, 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 right. So I remember, I remember, so Long Beach Medical was an interesting opportunity because both your father and yourself were like, hey, this is an opportunity where maybe we get, it was like 800 lives at the time or something like that. And we, we, were, we were working on the opportunity and it was like life only with voluntary life as well. Good memory. And I was, I was trying my very best to, to knock it out of the park for us because I knew I, we were well, trying to set an impression. I remember you know? my father saying, he goes, who, who is this guy? And I said, he's uh, Louis Ortiz. He goes, yeah, yeah, whatever. I go, well, why did you ask? He goes, does he know that if we don't sell something in the town that I met your mom in, he's out. I was like, <laughs> so like Regis Philbin, he's out. I, I go, why do you got to yell? Yeah, because Long Beach was where my father moved to after Brooklyn. Oh. So he's like, if we don't get this, we need, I need to retire. Oh, There's a problem. Terrible. I didn't even know that extra pressure was on me because yeah. literally him and I, we met, I mean, we, we crossed, like I rented a car and we met up yep. at Long Beach and we met with the HR person there and he was obviously on, he was on a roll. I mean, he was on fire making jokes left and right. He was, he was making them feel so good over there. And it was pretty much just a matter of like when they were going to sign into the dotted line. It wasn't even like a matter of if. Yeah. And I remember that I remember that day vividly because it was like you know the weather was pretty good, but it was like right on the water, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, where the where the hospital is. And I'm like, man, the, Dave, how do you think it went, man? And he's like, he's like, we we got this, we yeah. got this, we got this. I was right. like, oh, that's great. I was like, that's phenomenal. And then you know, literally maybe a week later, we got the paperwork yeah. Yeah. and, we, and we, we we implemented that case. I think it was for an eight one or yeah. Eight nine one or and something. And that like was that. the first account you sold at the DBL Center was was with my father. Yep, in two thousand thirteen. That was crazy. Yeah. That was wild. It was a great great, great experience. I remember that uh, vividly. And uh, he was awesome. One memory I have of Dave, and this goes back to, you know, right right before the stand up routine and, and and throughout the years, whether it was at his office, our office, meeting him at a diner, meeting him at, with Clark Gillies at, yeah. uh, what was that restaurant? Rosewood, Rosewood. Rosewood. <laughs> I, I mean, we had great lunches, okay? <laughs> Dave always had a calculator and a pad and pen at every meeting. Yeah. And you knew that you were having a good discussion <laughs> with Dave when he started playing the keys. And he's like on the keyboard, on the calculator, and he's writing down numbers, and he's saying, okay, if we do this, then you're gonna get that, okay? Or if we do this, this is what it means to you, and this is what it means to me. And that was Dave's meeting. And I, I never, without fail, have ever had a meeting with Dave, without Dave and a calculator and a so pen and pencil. And we converted that. And now you talk about data and technology now. That's a perfect segue into yeah. your broker dashboard. Because yeah. that's really what you're doing. You're, you're telling your brokers what they have and maybe where they want to get to. Yeah. It was showing them what they never saw, but what Dave saw with his general ledger. Yep. So what you witnessed, we're now giving to the brokers. Was that the inspiration? 100%. A hundred percent. What he just said is exactly on the money. And I would sit there and then my mom would be, you know, in their old home in their basement, like, he's at it again. These nickels and dimes are driving me nuts. My mom doesn't sound like a smoker. I don't know why uh, yeah, she yeah. sounds like a lot. There are a lot of brokers that do not line item their DBL cases. No, they'll they'll they no commission yeah. on the bigger stuff. Yeah. And then when the DBL check comes in, they just kind of stick it in the, and they're, okay, this is nice. They don't line item it. So now yes. you're basically doing what they should have been doing all along, and you're aggregating Accounting all that data. Accounting 101. And now when they realize what they have, they're yes. like, wow, this is a pretty nice right. block. But to your point, it's, he always said it's the key that can either make you lose an account or gain an account. Sure. But the exit of Zorik during that time made that prominent product vulnerability. It became our Achilles heel. 
because everyone wanted a piece of that. But now with PFL, we've turned it around and we're in a very, very good position. So good story. Like my father told me, you know, before he passed away, he said, you know, more has changed in the last 15 years than my first 30 in the business. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I would agree with that. I really would. I mean, look, you know, a major overhaul of a name change, Hurricane Sandy changing the game, paid family leave, and how many reps have turned over. And I'm not saying that in a, in a bad way, because we did not know each other at Cigna. You would come from Cigna. Right. Um, you had started Cigna with uh, someone else that I had known who ended up going on to principal when you had gone to Reliance and now you were principal taking on that person's job from who you work with at Cigna. So I always use this example of it's six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Uh, uh, my, my father would have a chart and I had it at one point where he would make a, a poster and he goes, uh, who's the rep that's coming in today? And it, it, it wanes on you where he would forget and, and he didn't care to a degree, and I think the problem is turnover hurts business. And the reason why you two are here and why we're doing this is because tenure is what lasts and helps your relationships and makes for good profitability at the bottom line. Because it's a relationship business tr through and through. We've gone through a lot together, good and bad, uh, personally, professionally. You've been there and it's become a family. And what's nice is, and correct me if I'm wrong, during these holiday parties, everyone who was even though they're competing, right. they feel like they're friendly and they yes. work well with one another. Because let's face it, you two compete with one another. It's, right. I, I go back to the office after the holiday party and I said, hey, I saw Lewis from when you were at Reliance. Now he's the principal. And I saw Tom and I saw, I saw John and I saw Mike and I saw Dan. And I saw all these guys at the party and like, aren't you trying to go after the same business? And I'm like, yeah, but they're great guys. Yeah. So if I lose a case to Lewis, I'm like, okay. Yeah. Hats off, you know, right. because yeah. maybe there's a case I'll win from Lewis and he'll, you know, and, you know, so it, it's such a great dynamic, mm -hmm. you know, because the, the companies you represent, you know, are, are, yeah, we're competing against each other and I'll lose a case to Guardian and, and I'm like, yeah, Danny won that case, you know, but maybe I'll win a case from Danny, you know, next month, you know, and that's how it goes. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's fun. That's, that's, that's the thrill of the chase, you know, that's, yeah. that's what keeps us going. But at the end of the day, it's, you don't do anything to hurt each other. Right, you, you do anything, you do everything to support each other, and you and you compete, but you don't go over the line, and that's what I respect about about dealing with your shop. I mean, competition's healthy, right? I mean, I mean, you you've developed relationships over the course of several years, where now you've got multiple, you know, preferred carrier relationships out there that have benefited you, benefited the organization for years and years and years. That's taken time, that's taken diligence, sure. that's taken patience. At the end of the day, us as salespeople, yeah, we want to win all day long, but, I, but there's enough meat on the bone where we can all eat. It's just a matter of being respectful and courteous to each other. And at the end of the day, we, we're trying to do what's right for that customer, for that group, for that for that broker. And you've known that for, for forever. Uh, we've known that over the course of our time. And, and, and that's what's, I think, truly sustained our success at the end of the day. Because Isn't we that funny? Because he just mentioned a moment ago, it, there's camaraderie, and yet, we're all selling in New York, where we're supposed to be backstabbing and killing one another. But we, we, he just described, and we're agreeing with the complete antithesis of what that is, but it's what you make it. Oh, without a doubt. And that's sort of what I had, I don't want to say I set out to be a goal that way, it's just what it's evolved into becoming.